This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to use the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. If his speeches are to be believed, Putin's invasion of Ukraine has been partly motivated by his qualms with NATO. According to Putin, NATO promised Russia in the early 90s that they wouldn't expand eastward, and then did exactly that just a few years later in 1999, when it admitted three countries that were formerly part of the Warsaw Pact, the Czech Republic, Hungary and Poland. NATO's expansion then accelerated in the 2000s, admitting seven new members in 2004, including three former Soviet states, before admitting Albania and Croatia in 2009. In the 2010s, NATO's eastward expansion decelerated because, well, there weren't that many countries left between NATO and Russia, but they still admitted two more countries, Montenegro and the Republic of North Macedonia in June 2017 and March 2020, respectively. Anyway, all of this has annoyed Russia because they consider NATO's eastward expansion as a betrayal of the agreement made in the early 90s. In his now infamous speech to the Munich Security Conference, Putin asked what happened to the assurances our Western partners made after the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact. Before going on to quote the then NATO general General Secretary Manfred Werner, who said that the fact that we are not ready to place a NATO army outside of German territory gives the Soviet Union a firm security guarantee. Similarly, former Russian Prime Minister Medvedev claimed in 2009 that Russia had received none of the things that we were assured, namely that NATO would not expand needlessly eastward. And Putin has since repeated this claim on many occasions. For its part, NATO denies these accusations. In a 2014 online fact sheet titled Russia's Accusations, Settling the Record Straight, NATO claimed that no such pledge was made and that no evidence to back up Russia's claims had ever been produced. So who's right in this, Russia or NATO? Well, luckily for you, we thought we'd do a video trying to figure out exactly that. We're going to split this video into two parts. Firstly, we're going to dig into the history books and try and figure out whether NATO actually did promise Russia that it wouldn't expand eastward. And secondly, we're going to ask whether NATO actively expanded eastward. That is, whether the West and the US actively encouraged Eastern European states to join NATO in an attempt to undermine Russia, or whether those Eastern European states were the primary agents in NATO enlargement. But let's start with the first claim that NATO promised Russia that it wouldn't expand eastwards. To find out if this is true, we're going to look at an article titled Deal or No Deal by Joshua Itzkovich Schriftson. If you want to know more, then go and give it a read. It's only about 40 pages long. But anyway, to properly understand the claim, we need to go back to February 1990, mere months after the Berlin Wall fell and while negotiations around Germany's future were still in the balance. The Soviet Union, headed by Gorbachev, was negotiating with the George H.W. Bush administration about how exactly to reunite a country that's been divided for the best part of 50 years. These negotiations culminated in the Treaty on the Final Settlement with respect to Germany, an agreement that pulled all Soviet troops out of the newly formed country, prohibited them from possessing nuclear weapons, and fixed their territorial borders. This agreement itself makes no reference whatsoever to the prohibition of NATO expansion in the East, but Putin and the Russians claim that there was nonetheless an informal, verbal agreement between top-level Russian and American officials that NATO wouldn't expand eastward, and that while NATO's non-expansion may not have been explicitly included, it was nonetheless in the spirit of the agreement. Gorbachev himself later claimed that during the negotiations, quote, the Americans promised that NATO wouldn't move beyond the boundaries of Germany after the Cold War. NATO and the US reject the Russian narrative here on two fronts. 
Firstly, they sometimes deny that there was any verbal agreement at all. While NATO's eastward expansion might have been mentioned, nothing was actually agreed, formally or informally. Then Secretary of State James Baker, for instance, has denied that any such agreement was made. Stephen Pfeiffer, the then Deputy Director of the State Department's Soviet desk, has similarly claimed that Western leaders never pledged not to enlarge NATO. But despite what US officials claim, recently declassified documents do suggest that NATO's non-expansion was at least discussed in 1990. Archival footage indicates that the US officials repeatedly offered informal assurances against NATO expansion, and most scholars agree that Baker himself told Gorbachev that NATO wouldn't expand, quote, one inch to the east. This leads us on to the second way that US officials reject the Russian narrative, and that's the argument that this talk of NATO non-expansion was essentially just mid-negotiation speculation. And the fact that it ultimately wasn't included in the formal deal goes to show that there was no agreement. They often point to an interview given by Gorbachev in 2014, when he admitted that NATO expansion wasn't explicitly discussed in 1990, although he did maintain that the expansion violated the quote, spirit of the agreement. Again, to be fair to the Russians, just because something didn't make it into the formal text doesn't mean that it wasn't agreed. Verbal agreements play an important diplomatic role. Former US Secretary of State John Kerry once said that non-legally binding agreements are the necessary tool in international relations. For example, the agreement between the US and Russia to remove missiles from near each other's territories in the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis was ultimately just a verbal agreement. All in all, it's hard to know who's right here. Putin and the Russians have a point that it's definitely true that US officials did, at times, promise NATO non-expansion. The US and the West have made a point that whatever promises were made clearly didn't make it into the final formal agreement, and as such, they see them as invalid. But on to the second part of the video whether NATO has actively expanded eastwards. Of course, the existing NATO member states agreed to admit new members, but did they actually try and persuade Central and Eastern European countries to join the alliance? Well, sort of. Essentially, the US has historically been very keen on NATO enlargement, while major European countries have been a bit more wary. Clinton, for example, thought that NATO expansion would allow the US to maintain influence in Europe, guarantee European security and prosperity, and satisfy Central European leaders who wanted a closer relationship with the West. He was probably also motivated by domestic reasons too, though. At the time, Republicans were advocating for NATO expansion, and Clinton likely wanted to show them that he was just as forward-leaning on foreign policy as his Republican counterparts were. Clinton was clearly conscious of Russia when considering NATO enlargements, though, but he was optimistic about the prospect of good NATO-Russia relations, and believed that NATO enlargement would discourage Russian aggression and encourage Russia's continued democratization. And to be fair to Clinton, at the time Yeltsin didn't seem to mind, telling the Polish Prime Minister in 1993 that Russia neither opposed Poland's membership to NATO nor considered it a threat. Declassified White House documents show that at the time, only Germany and Canada really shared this enthusiasm, and even then, German support wasn't unanimous, with Chancellor Helmut Kohl warning Clinton to slow down to avoid irritating Russia. Originally, Bush was less enthusiastic about NATO than Clinton, with a more unilateralist foreign policy, which included included reducing American troop numbers in the Balkan peacekeeping operation. But this changed in June 2001, when Bush gave a speech arguing that, quote, all of Europe's new democracies from the Baltic to the Black Sea should have a chance to join NATO. Judging by his speeches, Bush was more ideological than Clinton, as he described NATO's expansion as an exercise in, quote, expanding liberty. Ultimately then, Bush presided over the largest single expansion in NATO history in 2004, when seven new countries joined, and then in 2008, pushed for membership action plans for Ukraine and Georgia. The rest of NATO, and especially Germany and France, weren't so keen. So in the end, they settled on a statement saying that while they didn't have membership action plans, Georgia and Ukraine would become members of NATO eventually. While he did come out in favor of NATO accession for both Ukraine and Georgia after Russia's invasion of Georgia in 2008, Obama was generally less enthusiastic about NATO expansion. But by then, it was essentially too late. Putin was already feeling threatened. 
So you get the point. For the most part, the US did try to actively expand NATO, despite resistance from its European counterparts. Nonetheless, it's also true that NATO candidate countries were independently keen on a session. In 1991, Poland, Hungary and Czechoslovakia formed the Visegrad Group to push for European integration via the EU and NATO. Add to this, political parties who were reluctant to move on NATO membership were voted out of office, including the Bulgarian Socialist Party in 1996, the Slovak HZDS in 1998, and Hungary's 1997 referendum on the matter returned a massive 85.3% in favour of membership. Then, in May 2000, nine countries, including the Baltic states, formed the Vilnius Group, much for the same reason, and national referendums returned similar results. Slovenia's 2003 referendum reported 66% support for NATO membership. And you get where we're going with this. While the US might have been actively encouraging NATO expansion, NATO candidate states were at least as keen on the prospect, if not more so. And this is sort of unsurprising. Historically, any state between the two biggest European nations, Germany and Russia, has been at risk of being caught out in the middle of their ongoing great power conflict. And NATO essentially provided a guarantee against that. So, like the first claim, there's a bit of truth on both sides. Putin and the Russians have a point, insofar as it's true that the US was particularly keen on NATO expansion. But this narrative ignores the fact that NATO candidate states in Central and Eastern Europe were independently pro-NATO. And this is somewhat unsurprising when you consider Europe's violent history. We should make it clear, though, that while Putin's narrative might have some weight, it obviously doesn't justify an invasion. And we're in no way saying or advocating for that. One thing we are very much in favour of, though, is the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online STEM learning platform which turns complex subjects into fun and interactive experiences. You might not expect this, but I actually did a computer science degree, and jumping into Brilliant to refresh my skills was incredibly exciting and engaging. But you don't need that kind of background. If you just want to spend a bit of time building your programming skills, then you can do it right away, with no long, boring lectures like I had to sit through. Sorry to my former university. But instead, you can learn through interactive games and puzzles. There's something at all levels too, with more advanced courses on things like neural networks or even quantum computing. And it's not just computer science either. Brilliant has loads of interactive STEM courses that you can get hands-on with. Just pick a course you're interested in and get started. And don't worry, they're all designed by award-winning instructors and built on the principle of active learning. So you're gaining STEM knowledge by actually doing it. Essentially then, Brilliant helps you learn new things and sharpen your skills. So if you want to improve with STEM, then sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDREU. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. 